As I was flipping through my charts and screens on Saturday, poking around the market, my eyes went wide open when I saw the startling jump in share prices of Immunogen stock. An Immunogen ADC contains a manufactured antibody that binds to a target found on cancer cells. With one of the company's potent cell-killing agents attached as a payload, the antibody serves to deliver the cell-killing agent specifically to cancer cells bearing its target, and the payload serves to kill these cells. In some cases, the antibody also has anti-cancer activity. IMGN is a penny stock like XXII 22nd century stock, but without a history of dirt bags at the helm. This is a stock in the same industry as the highly successful Genentech that made shareholders rich with the first human insulin. Before this industry formed, diabetics had a short lifespan because the human system does not handle pig insulin well. There's a lot of pig insulin out there because there are a lot of hogs getting slaughtered each year in America. Genentech Inc. is a biotechnology corporation which became a subsidiary of Swiss multinational healthcare company F. Hoffman LaRoche AG in 2009. Genentech is part of the pharmaceuticals division of Roche. The other division is Diagnostics. Roche headquarters are in Basel, Switzerland. Genentech employs 13,697 people and operates out of the Bay Area in California. The company was founded in 1976 by investor Bob Swanson and recombinant DNA biochemist Herbert Boyer, who along with Stanley Norman Cohen used ligase scissors to cut DNA fragments with restriction enzymes in a plasmid vector. The group became the first to successfully express a human gene in bacteria when they produced the hormone somatostatin in 1977. David Gettle and Dennis Clyde joined the group to create synthetic human insulin in 1978, driving the financial success of the company. So the industry was formed by Genentech Roche. But what about Immunogen? Baruj Benesaraf was the head of the Sidney Farber Cancer Institute at the end of the 70s. He was approached by a small group of investors with a vision to create more effective, better tolerated anti-cancer therapies, leveraging the delivering ability of antibodies to deliver toxic drugs to specific cancer cells. These investors started with a grant to fund the Farber Institute's work with dedicated scientists. Today, Immunogen, Inc. trades across the NASDAQ under the symbol IMGN, developing antibody drug conjugate ADC therapeutics for cancer treatment. Immunogen was founded in 1981 and is headquartered in Waltham, Massachusetts. The stock has traded as high as $45.60 back in 2001, but is now trading at $6.14. IMGN languished at the beginning of the century, only to rally to $20.23 in October of 2013. But buy and hold investors were crushed as the stock tanked to $1.84 by January of last year, 2019. Now, the stock has tripled from the bottom of its downtrend. This recent burst in a new highs on what could be a strong uptrend caught my attention, and I bought about $40,000 worth of the stock yesterday when the market opened on Monday. What exactly was it that made the stock jump despite the fact that this is a company that has been losing money since its formation? Immunogen reported a loss of $0.70 cents per share for the full year of 2019. This sounds bad, but it was 42.1% better than the $1.20 per share loss the year before. Revenues came in at $82.3 million, up 53.9% from the year before. The current rise in share price is information-driven, such as the fact that Immunogen brought in $29.6 million in licensing and project milestone fees compared with a paltry $1.75 million of a year ago. This was due to a $14.5 million upfront amortization payment from Jazz Pharmaceuticals, symbol J-A-Z-Z. Immunogen also raked in another $7.3 million in licensing from Cytom X and another milestone payment of $12.7 million. 
Because of this, analysts were caught off guard by $15.3 million in non-cash royalty revenues that were more than double the prior year. And that's just the good news on inflows. Outflows dropped as research and development expenses declined by 40.4% from the year ago to $26.1 million from reductions in personnel costs and restructuring initiatives. Looking back three years ago in 2017, things were bleak for this company. The firm had no product to sell with the failure of Mirvatuximab, Sorev Tanzine, and the final FDA late-stage monotherapy study. This means that all of the expense of developing the drug was lost. The firm began restructuring projects and was advised by the FDA last December in 2019 to conduct a new single-arm pivotal study to push accelerated approval for Mirvatuximab, Sorev Tanzine, in platinum resistant ovarian cancer patients. The study is starting now in early 2020 with data available by mid-2021. The company has patients in phase three of the Mirasol study comparing mirvatuximab, serotanzine with single agent chemotherapy in platin resistant ovarian cancer patients with high folate receptor alpha expression. IMGN is also testing a combination of mirvatuximab, sorevtanzine, and chemotherapy, carboplatin, in platinum-sensitive ovarian cancer, and will update data from a triple combination cohort of the study with Roche's RHHBY, Avastin, Bevacizumab, and carboplatin this year. The other potentially solid product the firm is developing is IMGN 632 monotherapy in early stage studies in patients with blastic plasmacytoid dendritic cell neoplasm and acute lymphocytic leukemia. This is used in conjunction with Celgene Bristol Myers Videza or AVI ABBV Roche's Venclexta. Other immunogen ADCs use DM1 or DM4 mitanzanoid cell killing agents. DM1 is stuck onto an antibody with immunogens m tanzine or mertanzines, theoether linker, trastezumab, m tanzine, sold under the trade name Cadzilla. And DM4 is attached with ravtanzine or sorevtanzine, mirvtuximab, sorevtanzine as well. In the tuximab, ravtanzine, B2062 targets multiple myeloma and a tumab reftanzine BAY94-9343 targets mesothelin in mesothelioma treatment. Coltuximab reftanzine SAR3419 targets CD19 to treat acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Many of these products have suffered delays to marketing and failing FDA experimental trials. In this video, I've given you clear guidelines to buy this stock. This stock is so low priced, you should not waste your time with calls on Immunogen. Shares are trading off of all time lows, making this a potentially low risk trade. You're better off to place wide or no stops to modulate your risk with position size. Watch the two key price levels of 4560 and 2023 as this stock rises. These prices represent critical past highs the stock has not been able to push beyond in years or decades.